You guys notice anything different? Probably shouldn't, unless you already knew about it. I've got a different armrest, and it is so much more comfortable for me. Let me explain. Trying to do a video, and I've got puppy helpers. <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't helping. You guys are not helping. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not helping at all. You're not helping at all. No, you're not. I'm very cute, though. Yes, you are. It is tough to get any work done with two puppies when they want to be on camera. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm trying to do a video here. You're not helping. No, you're not. So these are my Valencia Tuscany seats, and overall, absolutely love them. They're still, like, new. Overall, very comfortable. But there's one thing here that I've wanted to do for a long time, and I've got some tendonitis in my right shoulder, so it really prompted me to kind of hurry up and figure out a solution to this. But not so much in the upright seating position, but when reclined, I find that the armrests are just too tall. I mean, they're comfortable. They're, they're very nice, soft leather and all that. But my shoulders are not fully relaxed. And what ends up happening is when I'm reclined here, my shoulders are pressed up because my arm has to go so far, almost horizontal, because these armrests are so tall when the seat is down in the reclined position. And I find myself halfway through a movie having to do this and put my arms down here to relax my shoulder in a nice normal position like you'd be in a car but up on the armrest you can see the shoulder has to come up and it just gets really tiring but here's what i've come up with now look at this other side no raised shoulder i know i'm exaggerating a little bit here but you can see the difference and that's because I've dropped the armrest as much as it can go. Now, if I put my arm down beside me, same. Notice there's no difference in how the shoulder drops. It is so much more comfortable, it's not even describable. Now, if you're wondering if you can benefit from this, because maybe you just aren't sure if it would be more comfortable, here's an easy thing to try, completely free. All you have to do is raise your armrest and put your arm down there. See how that feels. It should be day and night if you're in the position I'm in to make a difference. Now, maybe your armrest opens a little bit differently, but you get the idea, just get it out of the way. And what I did is I used a little cutting board down here. You could use a paper plate or something flat just to rest your arm on so you don't get a false idea, so you're not putting your arm inside it you know, lower than it can actually go. But there you go. I mean, that's all you have to do, really quick and easy. Now, when I started this project, I had certain constraints in mind. Your parameters may certainly be different. Your seats are, unless you've got this model, obviously going to be different. But just use my ideas and come up with what works for you. Most importantly, I wanted no modifications to the stock seats. If for any reason, at any time, I want to take these off, put the stock one back on, I can do so. In under 60 seconds, it's literally five screws and one spring clip. Boink and it's back so I could swap back and forth at any time. I wanted real leather because it, it needs to be durable, it needs to be soft. This is where my elbow and my arm rests. Don't worry about these marks, these are just from the folds that were in the package when it came from Amazon. These will come right out in time and obviously it's gonna wear with your arm there anyway, but these will disappear. You could take a heat gun or a hair dryer and get them out if it really bothers you to speed it up, but they'll go away on their own. Color-wise, it's almost an exact match what you see on camera because the light is on it's exaggerated it looks a little bit more gray seriously to the naked eye it's almost identical it is an identical pebble leather finish it's imprinted it is genuine leather it's not quite as soft as the original it's not quite as pliable but it's the same thickness and i've got the same padding it feels exactly the same as far as working as an armrest you would never know it's not a commercially made product as far as function goes speaking of function i retained the hinge so it can flip up there's no strut but it doesn't need it because it's so light it just stays where you put it and i still have my storage down there if i want it but boom there you go you can get everything off amazon and at lowe's so let me show you how to make it step one is to take off the stock armrest and that's very easy to do. We've got one spring clip here, and I'll show you how to take this off on the one I've already got off because it's easier to show you. And then 
We're gonna flip this up and take the bottom five screws off and remove the whole assembly with the hinge. The way these struts come on, it's just a ball and socket. You got the socket on this end and the ball is attached to the other side. And to remove it, all you do is use a little screwdriver and just pull it out a little bit. Just put it in there and bring this out just a bit. And what that does is just spread the spring apart and it pops right off. That's it. You can take the strut off either side. I'm just leaving it all with the actual armrest because I don't need it hanging down in there. Got this up and out of the way. Now I can just zip out these five bottom screws. Note, we're gonna be putting this bracket back on and you need to be very careful because the wood is just MDF and do you don't wanna put any torque on these wood screws. And you're gonna notice that it's crooked and all of mine, all my brackets and armrests are crooked and they're all different because whoever assembles these is doing it by eye. So that's just the way it is. I also had mixed and matched screws. I had a couple machine screws where they should have been wood screws. So just pay attention to that stuff. The point is do not over tighten these when you're putting them all back in. Now with the armrest off, take the bracket off this side. It's just easier to do it laying down here than trying to do it propped up there. And then we're going to put it back on the seat with the correct side because we need this on in order to take a measurement. Now, if you can get yours off in the vertical position and it's easy for you, go ahead and do that. But we got that back on. Go ahead and save your original armrest and its screws and just put them somewhere safe. Now, I went through a lot of prototypes to get the right materials and combinations and measurements to get what I got. Let me run through what I ended up with. You may make different decisions. First of all, the base board itself. Now I wanted this to be as thin as possible because I didn't have that much to work with. I only ended up taking off about three and a half inches. So I tried thicker wood and of course it works fine, but it eats up space. Now I've used this before in some other projects. It's a kind of a secret weapon. It is very thin, about an eighth of an inch. You can staple through it. It doesn't break apart. It resists flexing very well because it's whiteboard material. And it's got this layer of plastic over the top that really adds to the rigidity. I got a big, I don't know, about a three by four sheet of it from Lowe's for under 20 bucks. And I still have a big sheet of that in the garage. So I just cut out some blanks. And now I need to trim this down to size. Now you don't even need a saw to cut this stuff. All you need is a, a razor knife and something to use as a straight edge. And you just score it a few times and it cuts right through it. Just getting through this takes a few passes and then the wood material, it's relatively soft. But you can use a saw if you want to. It does kind of tear up the uh, edges. I, I use the saw to, to break out the big blanks and you can see it kind of tears it up, but you don't see any of it, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, saw is quicker, but you don't need it if you don't have a saw. You will need some kind of straight edge. This is a square, but you can use a regular ruler just to take measurements. We're gonna be taking a few key measurements and I'll show you what they are and why. Foam, I got off Amazon. This is half inch. We ended up needing one inch to match the OEM, which is what they have in here. I don't know if they have one piece or multiple, but to match the feel and performance, it takes one inch of the foam. However, I got half inch because I needed to stagger it, and I'll show you why on my seats. You may not need to, and you could probably just get a one inch if you don't need what I'm gonna show you. But the half inch works fine because you just use two of them and you get your one inch. Works absolutely identically. Now it took me a couple tries to find leather that I liked. This is from Amazon as well. And it comes pre-cut in these shapes here. Perfect size. It's a one by two. We need some little wood screws. I got these here. They're just a little half inch. And these are going to be for putting the bracket on the new board and since it's a lot thinner than the original we don't want the original sticking out like that and you need a staple gun and the smallest staples that you can find i'm using eight millimeter and they are perfect for this project they go through the layer of leather and the board completely biting and not poking through to feel anything on the top side so that worked perfectly now i've got two critical measurements to take one is the width 
and we're looking for the width of the end of the wood in here. These are constructed the same way. You've got a piece of vertical wood, you got some padding, and then you got the leather folded over it. And of course, theirs is all sewn together. Ours is gonna be stapled. That's the only difference though. So what we're looking for is the edge to edge of where the wood is itself, because we're also going to have some overlap on top and we don't want the armrests sticking out to here. We want it to look exactly the same and that's how it ends up. So measure just from the edge of the wood to the edge of the wood and measure each one separately because mine are all different because they're warped a little bit and you know, there's, there's about a quarter to a half an inch difference seat to seat. So just make sure each one is individual. And then here's the critical measurement as far as the length. We need to start just where this hinge starts, all right? And pay attention because mine, like I said, it's crooked. So it's on an angle one way versus the other. So one end hits and the other doesn't if you're measuring down this way. Go from the closest so you're not running into any trouble there. And then down at the front here, you can see it's got a slope. It's not totally flat. The board will actually end about here and then it starts to ramp up and slope up. So with the board flat, it stops about here. This is why I want the half inch foam. The top piece will be here and then the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the first piece will be here and then the one on top will be forward to take up a little bit of a gap. So you can see I don't have any gap and the little curve is filled by the foam. So you don't see anything if you look down there. That's why I went with the two piece instead of one. But if yours isn't this kind of design and yours is square, well, you can just go with one piece, one inch, and that's all there is to it. So put your board on here, find out exactly how far it'll go, and then measure back exactly to where that hinge piece starts. And in this case, it's 18 inches to where it stops being flat to the closest point. And I'm right about five and a half inches at the narrowest point of this. You can see it's bowed in at the center a little bit. So that's where I'm gonna measure from for the side. Now that we've got our blank cut exact size, we wanna make sure it's laying here centered. So just run your fingers and make sure it's even on the base of the seat. I've got it as far forward as it'll go without starting to go up that little ramp of curve there. And the back is all the way just touching the one corner here of the bracket. Now I marked the center point of the bracket of, I'm sorry, of the board. You can see it's not centered with the bracket. That's all right. We're gonna mark the center point onto the bracket and then we're gonna mark a line on the bracket along the edge of the board. So we can see exactly where it aligns and that way we can figure out where to put our holes and put this bracket on so that it lays in this exact, exact position. Can't speak today. Now that we have that marked, we can take the bracket back off the seat and we'll be able to put it on the new armrest. Since these measurements are relative, I marked which side is up and down and which way is forward. Now for your foam pieces, you want to cut them out so you've got about a half an inch overlay on the sides and about a one inch on the shorter sides. And this will help with that gap in the front. We're going to put our hinge on last. We're going to stack these two foam slightly offset the top layer. This is actually upside down. So it'll be like this. Top layer will be shifted just a bit. That'll give us a little bit of an angle for when we wrap the leather. That'll be over top. Staple it up, make sure it's nice and tight. Put our bracket on and we'll be done. We're gonna start with the leather. And don't worry, it's not gonna be perfect all the way through, we're gonna be removing staples and putting new staples and making sure things are tight as we go through it. And that'll make sure it's got a perfect finish on the top. And that's the only thing that's really critical. So don't worry about wrinkles and pleats and that kind of stuff until the very end. So lay down your leather. Then we're gonna put our foam. We want our top overhang piece. Just make up your mind which way is gonna be front and which is gonna be back. This will be my front of the seat. So I've got a little bit of a another half inch or so on that top piece of foam and just kind of center it. You want this as centered as possible on the leather. Of course, if yours are a different size or shape, may end up being a little bit different configuration, but that looks good here for mine. And this is just so we have enough material to stretch and staple and all that kind of good stuff. Next, on with your board and again, center it on that base piece of foam so you've got an even overlap along each edge. 
Now we're gonna come through and sink our first staple. And this is just basically to hold things in place right now. This one will be replaced and retightened later. But when you pull the leather over the sides and sink a staple or get it into position, you need to make sure that you're pressing down on your stack so that things aren't shifting around, especially the board to the foam. It's real easy to accidentally pull this leather too hard and start sliding that foam underneath and all of a sudden your board is off center. So that's why this one, you're not making this as tight as you can get it. You're just getting it into position. You want this foam to start rolling over the side and that's it. So what you don't want is to ever feel the side of this with your arm. You just want enough of this material so that when the leather's pulled over, you just get the nice little buffer of foam. That's all this overlap is for. It, compresses really well. So we're gonna roll this and just staple one right in the middle, right there. And then we're gonna come and holding both sides, get this side as tight as we can get it. Again, just making sure everything is cinched down. Once you get those two uh, anchored into place, it's not gonna to wanna to shift around. And when you're doing this, the only important thing is that you make sure that you check here and make sure that this is straight first and that you don't have it cockeyed. You should be able to fold both sides over and have everything look nice and even. So make sure that looks good before you sink your staples. Got those in. Now we're just gonna go out from there. Oh, every three, four inches. These are just to hold it in place. What you wanna do is as you sink one or two, flip it over and make sure you don't have any big wrinkles. Just kind of smooth it out and make sure it's nice and taut. And we're just gonna go out, not all the way to the edge, a few inches from the edge. We just need to get these in place so that all of this wants to stay and it's not stretching like this. It should be nice and straight. Okay, got the first row in, it's all set in place. Top side is nice and straight. Again, don't worry about the shipping folds and it's all gonna be tightened out this way as well. But that's what we want to look like right now. Now working here at the front, we're gonna pull this and put one staple in the very center, but we're not pulling it super tight like we were these sides, because remember, we want this nice big gap filling bit of leather here. So we just wanna pull it enough so it's got a nice even round roll, about an inch forward. Shouldn't be going so tight that this is actually rolling underneath the board. We just want it to make a nice shape like that. So once you get that in position, just sink a staple here to keep it in place. Next, pull the side tight all the way near the end. Sink a staple in there. Now the corners are the only tricky parts. You have to trim them down a little bit as you need more working space. Come around, get the corners looking good. You're gonna, you're gonna just basically do staples where you need them to hold them in place come around, get things looking good, pop staples out that are behind to reposition until you get it all looking good. Make sure you're flipping it over and making sure the top looks good because that's the only thing we're worried about. Bottom can be as messy as we need it to be, but the important thing is that you don't build up the layers of leather. So once you get it stapled in place, then just trim off everything extra in between the staples, keeping the top looking good. It's gonna be a little different depending on everybody's project. Okay, that's looking good enough from the top. Once you get everything in place, trim off all the excess pleats as far as you can. Now, before we do this side, we need to mark and pre-drill holes for the bracket. I'm gonna release these two staples here, just because we need to peel this back and get to this wood to locate the holes. So what we're gonna do is put this back basically the way it was aligned when we made this line. So it goes like this. We're gonna flip it upside down, find that mark. We're gonna align the bracket with the line we drew, align the center points, and then mark where the holes are for the bracket and pre-drill through with just a little 1 16th bit. This is basically just to make locating holes. It's not for the screws, it's so that we can place this bracket when we're all done on top of the leather and we won't have to guess where we're putting things. Now with the holes pre-drilled, we're gonna wrap this side and staple it with the exception of the very center. Don't bother with this here because we're gonna be putting this bracket 
right on top and that's what's going to keep everything down. I just noticed I showed you guys marking the wrong part of the bracket. This is how I showed you on the seat. Marking this piece here, you actually want to mark this here. Same idea though. Okay, got the bracket screwed on. Now we can put it back on the seat. Et voila. Even straighter than the original. Now I'm the only one that has this issue, so I'm just doing these two here. I'll leave the other ones as is. And like I said, it is literally five screws and putting the bracket on the original armrest and snapping the spring back on. 60 seconds if you want to swap back and forth or just do another one. Whatever you want to do. Nice and solid. You can still put all your weight on it to get in and out of the seat. No flex. Exactly the same kind of feel as the originals. Love it. So much more comfortable. And I have to admit, first time I did it, I sat down and I'm, I'm using it. And I'm thinking, man, I don't know if it was worth it. It's, it doesn't feel like that big of a difference. I didn't have the bracket put on yet. So I just took it off and put the stock one back there. Oh man, day and night, totally worth it. But like I said, super easy just to flip your armrest up, put your arm down there and see if it feels better to you. If it does, there you go. Now, if you don't want to use leather, if you just want vinyl or bonded leather, it's like 10 bucks cheaper, but these are, uh, I think I paid 17, 18 a piece for the leather. The big piece of foam, I got a big six foot piece of foam, plenty to do, you know, whatever kind of projects you want. I did this whole thing for like 50, 55 bucks. So really not bad. And like I said, these will go away in, in time just with a little use and letting them sit there. But you can get them out with heat if you're really concerned about it. There you go. Use my ideas. Hope it helps. See you next time.